All right, so I did my project over determining the age in animals. Uh, to start out with, the reason I really chose this project was I had a jar of fetuses, and I approached Oliver and told him I really wanted to bring it to class to do a presentation over it. So he brought up the topic of crown rumpling, which we'll discuss later. Um, when I looked more into this topic, I thought it was going to be a quick, easy presentation, but I learned that it is a very broad topic that covers numerous subjects, which we're only going to touch on a few of those subjects today. Other reasons I want to do this topic is animal rescues. Uh, my family's been with an animal rescue since I was before 10 years old, and a big issue that we'll talk about is, is getting a foster animal in and not knowing the, the age of that animal or if it's pregnant, how old the litter is or when it might give birth. And another thing is I want to talk about is pre-purchase exams because as a horse owner, I've seen a lot of problems with people buying horses that are too young or too old and the seller says they are. <laughs> so that's a big problem. <laughs> so to start out with crown rump length in the jar. So one standard measure used in estimating fetal age is the crown rump length. So it can be used in any animal, but the conversion in fetal age varies in species and sometimes breed. So that brings me to this chart to the bottom right. I thought that was a cat. Later on, reading more, it's for a bovine, so it is not up. Oh. It is not accurate at all, but you would. this is still how the chart would be set up. You'd have the age right here. Um, the observations, this is just showing how much information they had and how relevant their study was. And then a minimum of the length, uh, maximum length, and the mean. So this is kind of what you would do is you put your fetus. This is a deer fetus. It was just the first one I found, and it kind of had everything I needed. So you'll go off from the rump, which is right here, and you go all the way to the crown of the head, which is the point of the head. The big thing to make sure is that you're not including that tail because that tail is going to add a lot of extra length to it, which is going to skew your data. data. Uh, the jar is going around, like Ulrich said. Please make sure you don't break the jar because it will smell horrible and also just handle the care. Um, so age determination of fetal cats. So I found this information pretty useful because it's something I've heard before in the past, but it really came to be really useful in this presentation. Um, you'll normally see a change in the uterus at days 11 to 15. Uh, more accurate ultrasound can be used at age 21. Um, does anybody know what this is to the right? What this big, what kind of, what is this? Is this an ultrasound? Is this a CAT scan? Can anybody tell me what that is? This is an X. Yep, I heard it somewhere. This is an X-ray. So X-rays are really good at showing us bone. As you can see, here's the mother's spinal column right through here. Well, the big thing is to tell through here is that the bones of fetal kittens become mineralized at, at day 40 to 45. So as this is a cat, we can see these little faint marks down here. They look like just little dashes. Those are the spinal columns of the fetuses in there. Uh, next thing is an ultrasound. Uh, in case anybody didn't know how an ultrasound works, here's a picture of the probe that would be used. So the important thing also is the probe tip, which is right there, would be up here and it uses ultrasonic sound, that's why it's called ultrasound, to bounce off and then come back to the reader. Uh, as I've written down here, the bone is shown as white in here, so you can see chips of bone, and the liquid, like these dark spots around it, that'd be the amniotic fluid. Um, different shades will represent different tissue, like see some of this gray tissue might be fat or other kinds of tissues. Um, and this one, I believe, is actually a dog, but cats and dogs are very similar. And you, it's pointing to the fetal heart here, but yeah, I cannot see anything in there. Um, so this brings me to the next point. It's kind of nice having the fetal rump on a deceased animal, but how can we use that in real life to help us out? So this is the story of Autumn. Autumn came to us in the fall of 2018, which was last year. I think it was about October. We rescued her from IACC. We got a call saying we had, they had a rescue-only animal, which means that someone can't walk in and adopt her. So someone had to go there from rescue and hold her till she got better. Well, when we got there, we found out what the issue was. They had her as a limp that she had a bruise in her leg and that she was pregnant. As you can clearly see from the x-ray right here, that's not what I would consider bruising. That's a clearly broken bone. The big problem with this is you can't treat that broken bone until you have the puppies out or if you drug that dog on anesthesia or anything like that, it'll affect the babies. So she actually, we had to just stabilize the leg until she had these puppies, but how are we supposed to know how long that's going to be? Well, th through the use of crown rump length, the doctor and the vet was able to measure the puppies, give us an estimate when they would be out, and she was pretty close. I think he said November 
So the third was the delivery date, and I think it ended up being November 14th, because I think they're coming up on four or one year now. Uh, this is Autumn to the right. This is her pregnant. She's a little bulged out here. She's not all that fat. And this is Autumn after her puppies. Speaking of puppies, this is... So these are Autumn's puppies. She had six alive, two were... One was a stillborn, and then one passed away within 24 hours. Um, as you can see here... As you can see here in this picture, bottom right, puppies are really hard to take pictures of. So if anybody's a puppy photographer, kudos to you. Because as we can see here, this guy's kind of looking at us, this guy's leaning his head over, this guy's not even looking over, and this guy's not even facing the right direction. Um, so also, the age of determination of horses. So like I talked about that uh, importance of a pre-purchase exam. So if you want to buy a horse from someone online, they say it's a broke year old male. Is this true? Well, there's only a couple really way good ways to tell if this is the truth. Well, this is Jesse. I was hoping to have her here today, but because of icy weather and my dad mad at the weather since he can't be in the field, she is not here today. Her registered name is Conclusive Cash Jewels. I actually have a picture of her uh, registration paper, papers here on the next uh, slide. Um, the big thing I want to bring up here is if you want to tell the age of a horse, the best way to do it is by registration papers. So this shows her parents and her uh, her parents, grandparents, and beyond. Uh, this is actually zoomed in so it's not as blurry, but it's got her registered name, it's got her birthday, and her color pattern, and a registration number. But what happens if we don't have those registration papers? And that's when we would use, in horses, we use their dental structures, or denta dentation? dentation. It's the development of teeth and the arrangement in the mouth. So in horses, they're not like us, in the way that all of our teeth are in a row. They have gaps and spaces in between. Um, and the problem with using dentition to tell age is that horses that do activities like cribbing or chewing on anything or even might even bit a rock before or anything like that will mess up their teeth and that will throw off your accurate age. And I put down what cribbing here is in case anybody didn't know. It's when they place their incisors, which are these front teeth right here that are labeled, on an object like a fence or a gate and they suck in air. Uh, two other important things I've found about horses is that they're heterodontous, which means they're different shapes. Their teeth are not all the same shape like ours. Our canines are pointed, or their molars are wider. And then they're diphodontous, I believe is the term, and it means there's two set of teeth. So like we, did, we have baby teeth, horses also have baby teeth. Um, I also want to bring up wolf teeth. So wolf teeth are right here in this picture, really small, and they are just like a normal tooth except for their roots are not long and the ligaments that hold them in there are very weak. The problem with wolf teeth are, especially if you're riding a horse, the bit, which is the metal bar that sits in a horse's mouth, will want to push against that when you pull back on your reins. So it's normally very useful to have that wolf tooth taken out early. Um, sometimes horses loses their, their wolf teeth automatically. Like I said, they're not in there really tough and strong as some of these deep rooted teeth are. Um, uh, during my right. during my internship over the summer, I was able to see him remove a couple wolf teeth just from a routine dental exam. He'd be uh, floating horses' teeth, and he'd see a wolf tooth, and he'd just get a pair of pliers or special dental pliers. But it was just as that as he just stuck it in there, grabbed it, and there wasn't much bleeding to it at all. They're not really in there that well. Um, cup stars and galvanians groove. So cups um, are the center of an infidebulum, which an infidebulum is a cone-shaped cavity or space. As you can see here, this black part's an infidebulum. It's kind of cone-shaped and it goes farther down in the teeth. Um, it's normally gone by eight years. It turns into an enamel spot, so that's going to be your weaker tooth. It's going to go grow and get more harder with that enamel. As we know, it's the outer protection layer on our teeth. Uh, dental stars. Uh, are in the pulp cavity of the tooth, which is down here. Uh, they're appeared at eight years of age in first incisors, and they're larger and darker as the horse gets older. So as you can see, the dental stars right here are pretty dark. That means it's an older horse. Um, Galvanian's groove, which I'm gonna bring up later again, is this right here, it's one of, the, one of the incisors on the front part of the horse. So that's the front right, or front left jaw of the horse right there. And you can see that little black line, that's the galvanian groove. So when I say 10, 15, and 20 years, on this slide, at 10 years, nope, I was wrong. At 10 years, the, gal the Galvanian groove first starts to form. 
At 15 years, it's halfway down, and then at 20 years, it's the entire length. So that's a really good way to tell the age of the horse. Uh, these are some other points on when you can tell the age of horse. There's so much. It's just when the teeth are coming in. Um, at about five years of age, you normally lose all those uh, deciduous baby teeth are gone. And other than that, the big point to take from this picture is that your horse Horse teeth are normally directly down on each other, but as they grow older, your teeth tend to bend outwards. As you can see, these are straight down where these are bending out to a point, which it got cropped by PowerPoint. Thank you. Um, this is another re reiteration of it. You're seeing your spots in the teeth. It's around their age. There's also some d diseases in horse, like parrot teeth, that will change this, so it's not always accurate. But like I said, it's the uh, best thing to do is have a vet run your check on your horse, that way he'll tell you what's going on, give you an accurate age of the animal, and tell you if it's got any diseases or anything. And those are my sources. Okay, let's do a soft round of applause for that. Yeah, the horse teeth keep erupting out of the jaw. Correct. They're all. And that's why that groove can show up and disappear. Yeah. disappear after a while. Okay, so now, you mentioned something at the beginning that somebody was dishonest. Remind me about what you said earlier. So. When you're going to buy a horse, sometimes someone online will say, oh, we have this perfectly broke three-year-old mare, you know, it's been ridden all the time, trail riding, everything like that, when you could actually be getting an eight-year-old horse because just the condition of the horse doesn't tell its age too well. Yeah, yeah so teeth are the best, so we're at, we'll see what comments we have. I'll let you point. Yes? Yeah, that's actually happened to somebody at my barn. They bought uh, what they thought was a six-year-old mare from Florida, and they had never seen the horse. And the pre-purchase was done by a vet they didn't know he knew. Um, okay, say that last part again. The pre-purchase exam was performed by a vet that no one knew, and it wasn't very thorough. It was a really weird pre-purchase. You'd want an experienced equine vet to do the aging. You know what you want your vet? You don't want them to bring their vet because their vet yeah, might want to your face. They were a first-time horse buyer with no guidance. Mm -hmm. And it turns out it's at least 11. And we actually found another ad from the same person from a couple years ago listing its actual age. So this person has been just been listing her younger and younger because I don't want oh, to train her <laughs> Younger and younger until, until she sells. I'll let you point. Yes. Um, that's, that's actually happened to me. Like we did our own, like we took our own vet and I've had this horse 10 years now and they, because he was so quiet, he was a, um, just dead quiet to the world. So they listed and he came off a dogger's truck. So to start with, they didn't even know his age. So they just assumed he was maybe six, seven, um, and he was a three-year-old turning four. And so he was just dead quiet. And like, he's my forever horse, so I've had him for 10 years now. I think it's Jen. buyer beware. Mm -hmm. Now let me tell you another thing that happened to a horse that I heard of a story. It wasn't my horse, it wasn't the horse I knew. And this is pretty terrible. But somebody was going to sell a stallion, a testis was missing. Do you know what a vet did to get the horse sold? They put an artificial one in there. Say it louder. Put an artificial testicle in there. That's pretty terrible. Was well, selling the horse to be... I don't, know, I don't know if they're going to breed it. Maybe they Probably. Were. If you're selling a stallion, yeah. it's normally hard not to sell a stallion. For but isn't it, there's celastic testicles that you can put in a scrotum, and somebody that's not very experienced will just palpate two testes, and they can't tell. Right. That's pretty terrible, isn't it? The other one was probably a crypt orchid, right? It never descended. But then that trait gets passed on to the offspring. Pretty terrible. Buyer beware. Man. Not everyone out there is your friend. Does anybody know what's in the jar? Anybody oh, yes. Yeah. How, how old, right? So we're going to do? do species oh. and age. Okay, go ahead. We need guesses. What was it? I thought I heard something. Cats, yes. So they are feline. And the age, anybody, any ideas on age? How many days? Yeah. Days. <laughs> So you can't say anything. You saw the label. Fourteen days. A little older. About uh, double that. Oh really? Yeah. Thirty days. Thirty days. Halfway through, right? And like you said, that was an estimate on both the sides of the vet and the crown rump chart that I found. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And it's pretty accurate. But remember, I liked your table where you had the minimum, maximum, and then the average because there's going to be variation. Right. You're never going to yeah. have. You're never going to have. Because look, look at the runt. The runt of the litter will never. It will be the minimum all the time, right? And a big point of species too on this, mm -hmm. or the breed, because you can have a Chihuahua or a oh Great Dane. Yeah. They're going to be different sizes at these different ages. Yep.